My name is Henk Reimers and I'm at Chalmers University of Technology. This presentation covers work on a variation of tree-related belief propagation in collaboration with Federico Pena and Vladimir Savage. Our motivation for this work stems from our research in cooperative navigation where devices such as GPS receivers help each other in navigating. This problem can be cast as a statistical inference problem and solved by performing belief propagation on a factor graph that spans over space and time. Belief propagation has a drawback that the beliefs may be overconfident or overly concentrated, so that devices will in fact mislead their neighbors. We looked into other message passing methods and found that mean field and expectation propagation have been applied to the navigation problem but do not address the problem of overconfidence. For another message passing method, tree weighted belief propagation, we could not find any papers in the field of navigation. We believe this is due to two reasons. First of all, it is challenging to apply tree weighted belief propagation to a distributed setting due to the use of so called edge appearance probabilities. We address this problem through a variation of tree weighted belief propagation called uniformly weighted belief propagation, which we presented in ICASP earlier this year. The second problem is that tree weighted belief propagation was originally derived only for pairwise interactions, so it is not straightforward to apply this to problems with higher order interactions such as LDPC decoding. In this presentation, we have two contributions. We first derived tree weighted belief propagation for higher order interactions, the results of which can also be found in a paper by Minka in the context of fractional belief propagation. Secondly, we introduce uniformly reweighted belief propagation and apply it to decoding of an LDPC code. The resulting decoding algorithm turns out to be equivalent to the recently proposed divide and concur algorithm by Yedidia et al., but was derived from a very different start point. Just to fix the terminology, in inference we consider an unknown variable x, an observation y, and a model theta. X and Y are considered to be random variables, leading to two possible factorizations of the joint distribution. There are a number of problems of interest. First of all, what is the likelihood of the model? This is also known as the partition function. Secondly, what is the most probable configuration, or the map assignment? And finally, what are the marginal distributions? In the bottom of the slide, you see a simple example, where X is a sequence of bits. Theta is a channel parameter indicating with which probability bits are flipped, and y is the channel observation. Here we will focus on the first and third problem, the partition function and the marginal posterior distributions. In most cases of interest, the posterior can be factorized, where the factors phi are known, but the denominator, the likelihood function or the partition function, is unknown. From this factorization, we can draw a factor graph or a Markov random field. Now we can consider another distribution B that factorizes in the same way, or equivalently belonging to the so-called marginal polytope, and computes the KL divergence to the true posterior. Recall that we can only compute the true posterior up to a normalization constant. After some straightforward manipulation, we find the following optimization problem, where the log partition function is found by maximizing an objective function involving the entropy of the trial distribution B and a cross term that is linear in B. The optimization occurs over the marginal polytope. We can visualize this problem as follows. The objective function is concave, since the entropy is concave and the cross term is linear. The maximum is given by the posterior distribution. This problem turns out to be a convex problem, but contrary to traditional thinking, it is not tractable. The reason is twofold. First of all, when the factor graph or the Markov random field is not a tree, the marginal polytope is very hard to describe. Secondly, the entropy for a generic distribution is hard to evaluate. Many existing message passing methods then relax the constraint set or the objective function. For example, mean field considers a smaller constraint set for which the entropy is easy to compute. This leads to a lower bound on the log partition function. Tree weighted belief propagation considers a larger constraint set, called the local polytope, for which the entropy is also easy to compute. 
The function itself is upper bounded. This leads to an upper bound on the log partition function. Finally, belief propagation is found by replacing the entropy with the so-called beta entropy and performing the optimization over the local polytope. Belief propagation leads to an approximation of the log partition function. We will now describe tree-weighted belief propagation. Consider a Markov random field with a cycle. From this Markov random field, we can create multiple trees. With each tree, we associate a probability. For a given distribution, the entropy of a given tree is strictly larger than the entropy of the overall distribution. We can then make a convex combination of those trees and of those entropies. This leads to the following optimization problem, where the objective function involves single variable entropies and mutual informations between pairs of variables. Every mutual information is weighed by a so-called edge appearance probability. For example, consider the top edge in the Markov random field. This edge occurs with a total probability of 0 0.4, being 0 0.3 plus 0 0.1. Now, to extend tree-weighted belief propagation beyond pairwise interactions, it is more natural to work with factor graphs, where we then have factor appearance probabilities. After some straightforward manipulations, we find the following expression. The objective function again involves single variable entropies and mutual informations regarding groups of variables. These are then weighted with so-called factor appearance probabilities indicating with which probability a certain factor belongs to the set of trees. We can now solve this optimization problem by writing down the Lagrangian and taking the derivatives with respect to b. The details of the mathematical derivations can be found in the paper. When all the dust has settled, we find the following expressions. We find messages from factor vertices to variable vertices, messages from variable vertices to factor vertices, beliefs of single variables and beliefs of groups of variables. It is easy to see that when all the factor appearance probabilities are 1, we find standard belief propagation. And when all the interactions are pairwise, we find standard tree-weighted belief propagation. Now it is not straightforward to apply tree-weighted belief propagation with higher order interactions to distributed problems. In particular, it is hard to assign valid factor appearance probabilities and to distribute this knowledge over the network. It is also known that tree-weighted belief propagation is not always better than standard belief propagation. To address this problem, we propose uniformly weighted belief propagation, where all factor appearance probabilities are the same, equal to rho between 0 and 1. The motivation for this choice is that in many problems of interest, the factor graph has a great deal of symmetry, such that a uniform factor appearance probability would be optimal. Now note that we can interpret the optimization problem as a multi-objective problem with a trade-off parameter rho. And as we reduce rho from 1 to 0, we put more emphasis on maximizing the single variable entropies, which was in fact our original objective, so that the beliefs do not become overconfident. As an application, let us consider LDPC decoding. In an LDPC code, the set of code words can be defined through the parity check matrix. We assume that we receive a vector y over a memoryless channel. The posterior distribution can then be factorized as follows. As an example, consider the following parity check matrix. The factor graph is given as follows. The bottom row of factor vertices correspond to likelihood functions related to observations. The middle row of variable vertices correspond to the individual coded bits. And the top row, marked plus, correspond to the check nodes that enforce the parity check constraints. We can now perform our message passing algorithm. Just as it's standard LDPC decoding, we work in the log likelihood ratio domain. The messages from the channel are the standard log likelihood ratios. The messages from variable nodes to check nodes are now modified with the parameter rho. When rho is 1, we find standard belief propagation. The messages from check nodes to variable nodes are unchanged. In the check nodes, we can now apply standard sum product algorithm through the max star operation or min sum decoding.
In this figure, we show the bit error rate for a fixed signal-to-noise ratio as a function of rho for small LDPC calls. We observe distinct minima for rho less than 1. Note that for min-sum decoding in the check notes, the optimal value of rho is much smaller than 1. This is because min-sum decoding inherently creates overconfident beliefs. This figure shows the bit error rate as a function of the signal-to-noise ratio for BP and uniformly rated BP. The top two curves correspond to rho equal to 1 and the bottom two curves correspond to rho less than 1. We observe a small but non-negligible performance gain. In conclusion, we believe that uniformly rated belief propagation, even though it is a simple variation of tree rated belief propagation, may be a promising algorithm for certain inference problems especially those involving dense graphical models. In the future, we would like to get a more fundamental grasp on uniformly weighted belief propagation in terms of its convergence points and convergence speed. Thank you for your attention.